Cartoon Network seems to be moving in a whole different plot-heavy direction with its channel. With shows like Steven Universe moving into its fifth season, and future greenlit shows like Infinity Train, thank god they finally greenlit that show, it seems like the channel is definitely showing some love for some story-heavy shows for the first time in a while. But you may be sitting at home looking at your TV and wishing for a simple show. A show with no story, no arcs, just a simple slice of life. While Christina Miller's got your back, with Cartoon Network's newest and cutest show, Pickle and Peanut. I, I, mean, I mean apple and onion. The story of an anamorphic apple and his onion friend who both live together in an unspecified big city. Together, the two navigate everyday problems in their own quirky way. The problems they face range between simple things like beating a video game, or sometimes more complicated financial issues like needing money. But in the end, they always solve the problem Apple and Onion style. Apple and Onion are definitely quirky best friend characters. One time I wrote Clue on a piece of paper and then wrote nothing inside, there's a joke for you. <laughs> Although while most buddy shows like Adventure Time or the similar Pickle and Peanut have characters with outrageous in-your-face personalities, Apple and Onion goes in the opposite direction. Apple and Onion are both extremely weird, somewhat socially inept people with good hearts. There's a certain level of innocence in both of them. They find what they want to do and set out to achieve their goals. They're driven, but naive to how the world actually works. This creates problems for the two. It's apparent when they spend an entire montage trying to figure out how to get tips from customers. Personally, I don't think anyone should tip, but that's just me, guys. If you need anything, we'll be right over here. The show also boosts a few supporting characters. Falafel is their landlord, who's a genuinely nice human who fixes stuff for them. They have a friend Pizza, who runs a diner, but the diner doesn't serve pizza. More on that later. However, where Apple and Onion really shows its world is through all the people Apple and Onion help. As much of a handful as these two can be, they go out of their way whenever they can to help people. It's really sweet. And through that, we see all the different people in their world. A lot of solutions for their problems come from the people they've helped, and they seem to have this sort of friends with everyone kind of vibe around town. It's very nice. Hey, it's you! Listen, you really gave me the confidence as an artist to really- We're trying to catch that truck! I'll give you inspiration! Yeah! The world of Apple and Onion is just as bizarre as them at face value. It appears to be exactly like our world in every way, except instead of people, everyone is an anthropomorphic food item. This, of course, is a prediction for our own world when the food uprising of 2025 happens, and we'll all bow down to our new delicious overlords. God, okay, just don't don't put in that joke. That was, that was stupid. The whole ethics of the show is questionable, though. Sure, everyone is a food item and they're alive, but we clearly see them eating other food. Heck, in the very first episode, Apple buys a bunch of ice cream and just nonchalantly eats it. Like, I'm assuming other people in this universe are also ice cream? Do they just live while other foods don't get to live? The pizza guy owns a diner where he sells food to food. How do they decide which food gets eaten and which food gets to live? At one point, he refills a coffee person with more coffee. Is that his blood? Do other people drink his blood? Is he just a cup? There are other cups in the show. Are those cups alive too? Pizza was birthed by a slice of his mom. Is that how they procreate? How come Apple and Onion both have parents? What is this world? If you kill someone and eat them, is it even illegal? What food is, What food would even be your judge? Does their food ever go bad? Why does an onion need prescription lenses? The show is also pretty unique in how musical it is. Like, I'm not talking Steven Universe levels of plot-heavy musical numbers, but they're definitely in there. It can range from a song every episode to many, many, many songs in an episode. Usually the episode even starts with one, or they sing along the way. They call back to songs a lot too, which shows that the songs are kind of in-universe. I just imagine that Apple and Onion sing a lot, and everyone else bears with them. They always sing about what's going on in their current situation, which can get kind of old. The songs themselves are usually groovy piano synth little jams, and they sing monotonically over them. If this concept sounds annoying to you, chances are it will get old very fast. To others though, it might seem charming and fun. Me, I'm not a huge fan of music or little quirky songs and shows. I just kind of get annoyed by them. However, I'm not everyone, so you may actually have a different opinion. Just watch the show yourself and find out. I didn't use anything on that last one. I was gonna, but I forgot what I was gonna say. Apple and Onion has this simple but charming art style too. All the colors are softer flat tones and the outlines are in the middle of thin and thick. Overall, it's kind of relaxing to look at. Nothing about it is too in your face or crazy or out there stylistically, it's all kind of plain but in a good way. All of the characters are a food item with somewhat realistic faces. To me, it's in the middle ground of being really weird and kind of creepy to a little funny. But it's nothing too distracting and once you get past the whole everybody is food gimmick, it's pretty normal. Like you get used to it. The show's abstract concepts might seem fitting coming from the show's creator, George George Gandhi. Gandhi's previous work was on the even more bizarre Amazing World of Gumball, another buddy comedy of sorts. That's where he gets his Britishness also. He's a very hands-on creator, working with the show's music and even voicing Apple. We've got a freaking Alex Hirsch up in here, whoa! 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 
Speaking of voice actors, Onion might also sound familiar, as he's played by Richard Ayodid, who's also in the popular sitcom The IT Crowd. It's a nerdy sitcom without being the Big Bang Theory, so it's all right in my book. But that's really all there is to the show. Overall, Apple and Onion is a cute slice of life show. It's not anything more, but it's not trying to be either. There's not going to be a season-wide arc about Apple's dying mother, it's just a simple little cartoon that I feel is worth a watch, if you're looking for something like that. And if not, watch Voltron, I don't know, I heard it's pretty good. But if you're looking for my recommendation, I'd give Apple and Onion a yes. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents, those are my thoughts on Cartoon Network's newest cartoon, Apple and Onion. Hey, if you want to help out the roundtable, consider supporting us on Patreon. And you can have your names featured on screen like all these beautiful people here. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, share this video, and as always, subscribe to the roundtable for more great cartoon content. You can follow the roundtable at Roundtable Vids on our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, and you can follow me at Retro Nemo. As always, guys, I'm Retro Nemo. This has been a cartoon sort of thoughts and review on Apple and Onion, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I hate myself. <laughs>